again we meet for saints of bengal and we are continuing with the story of shri radharaman charandas deva so we know about him all those who were listening from before that he was a real, really uh, mystical vaishnava and he was spreading the teachings of lord goranga but how he was spreading it was to, you see i give the name radha charan mm. to my the sikh vaishnava you see because of maharaj i give radha charan he has to drink it mm. but it behind meaning to give radha charan radha charan who never deviates from the radha rani his mind this is radha charan who is deviating they are not radha charan they don't understand even radha there are Go on. He has to listen. We all listening. So, Charan does this. So, uh, we also learned how he was spreading teachings of Lord Goranga. Actually, he was only doing Sankirtan and was hugging people, and in that way, his power was. Spreading onto others, and okay, slowly, bhava. What is bhava? Feeling. Feeling. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Feeling is coming from inside or outside? From inside, of course. If there is no feeling, there is no rasa. Rasa is the raso vaisa Krishna. If you have no feeling, rasa will not come to you. And when there is no feeling and rasa, there is no ananda. So <clears throat> we are continuing the story when one day. Babaji Mahashaya, which was one more uh, name of uh, Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva, one day he decided to go out for Nagar Kirtan. He first went to the house of Gopal Babu. The head clerk of the local post office, so that he might also participate in it, in this kirtan. His party followed him dancing and singing. As the kirtana was going on in the courtyard of Gopal Babu's house, Gopal Babu took Navadvip Das aside and said, I have to go to the post office earlier today on account of some important work, so I cannot accompany Kirtana. Navadvip Das said to him, Then you bow down to Kirtana and go to the office. And we go out for Nagar Kirtan. Just when Gopal Babu was about to start for the office, Babaji Mahashaya took the call or the drum out of the neck of Jai Gopal and put it round Gopal Babu's neck. What could Gopal Babu do? 
the Sankirtana party moved and he moved along with it, playing on the call or the drum, Mridanga like. Others in the party got anxious about him and thought of relieving him somehow. <laughs> but Babaji Mahashaya liked him, liked him playing on the call so much that he always kept him near him in Sankhita. So no work. Play him with anger. <laughs> This time, also, he was so close to him that no one had the courage to do anything to relieve him. The Kirtana party, Sir, sir Circumambulate, uh, <laughs> okay, he went around the Jagannath temple and proceeded toward Harsh, Chand Harsh Chandisai. Harsh Chandisai, the place where only the Pandas and Pujarish of Pujaris of Jagannath live. The Sankirtana was so thrilling and enchanting that all of them came running wow. and began to sing and dance in it. Their children danced joyfully in front of the kirtana. Everyone was in ecstasy. The kirtana party went to Tota Gopinath and the Samadhi of Haridas Thakur and marching through the road leading to the court reached back the ashrama at about one o'clock. Gopal Babu then kept the call aside and made obeisance before Babaji Mahashaya, before Babaji Mahashaya. Looking at him, Baba said with a start, Gopal, didn't you have to go to the office? Yes, I had to go, replied Gopal Baba. So what is the time now? It is one o'clock. It is one o'clock and you have not yet gone. Will you not get in trouble? How can I say? You know all about that. At what time do you go to the office every day? At 10, and sometimes even earlier. Today, I had to go at 9. Baba Mahashaya was taken aback, aback, shocked. But he said, however, Nitai Chan wishes you do not go to the office at all today. Gopal Babu obeyed. He went to the office the next day and started his work. Nobody said anything. The postmaster was all the time talking of Barha Babaji Mahashaya and praising him. At the end, Gopal Babu went to sign the attendant register. While signing it, he thought, since no one has said anything to me about yesterday's absence, it is obvious that Babaji Mahashaya himself came to the office in my disguise and did all my work. Did he not prove thereby? 
that I was not absent? Why shouldn't I therefore sign the register for yesterday as well? As if I forgot to sign yesterday. So he turned the page and signed for the previous day as well. When Gopal Babu returned from the office, he told everything to Babaji Mahashaya. Babaji Mahashaya said, if absolute surrender to Harinama and faith in its unlimited power can solve all problems relating to the spiritual world, why can't it solve the trifling problems or small problems of this world? What is necessary is faith. If Harinama does not give any result, it is because we are lacking faith. Gopal Babu fell at the feet of Babaji Mahasaya and said with tears in his eyes, Rabu, I am a sinner and I do not do any bhajana. Yet you take so much trouble for me. Kindly forgive all my offenses and bless me so that birth after birth I get the shelter of your lotus feet. Babaji Mahashaya lifted him up and hugged him and hugged him, thereby assuring him that his prayer would be fulfilled. Others sitting near him shouted together, Jai Nityananda! One day, Kishori Mohan Sena, the local sub-judge, and uh, Babu Jagat Chandra Roy, the local deputy magistrate, came to Babaji Mahashaya. Kishori Babu said to him, I beg to propose that you should have a mat of your own. It is not good that you should always be moving from one place to another and be dependent on others. Babaji Mahashaya, he said, what you call dependence, Kishori Babu, is really independence. I am not bound to a particular place and I can freely go where I like. If I own a mat, it will not be possible for me to move about freely. I shall have to make proper arrangement for the mat before I think of going anywhere. Radhe. Radhe. Pram. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I thought it was. Um, why should I take that moderation upon myself? Kishori Babu said, you tell us that devotional service is the highest dharma. You tell us that uh, it is sorry. It is not possible 
to attain the Lord as easily to any other means a true seva or service. What I actually want to propose will provide you with excellent opportunity for service. You see, there is a math here which was established by Seva Das Babaji, a Siddha thing on the advice of his guru, Shinaratam Das Thakur Mahashaya, the great saint and disciple of Sri Lokanath Goswami. The less in the disciplic succession of Naratam Thakur, who was the Sevata Sevai of the Math, was Adhikari Krishna Das Krishna, uh, Krishna Das. Krishna Das is dead, and there is no one left to receive the property. All movable property of the math, including Radha Kanta and other deities, have been shifted to the police office and are in their custody. If you agree to receive the math, I can do something about it. The math is called Janj Janjapit math. It is also called Virakta Siddha Ashram. But Baba Mahashaya did not agree. Another day, Kishori Babu and Jagatchandra Roy met Baba Mahashaya when he and his companions were going dancing and singing as usual to Radha Kantamat, where they were invited for Prashad. Kishori Babu said, Baba, you are going to Radha Kantamad for taking Prashad. But your Pranavalaba has been lying there in police post, unattended and unfed for over a month. Day after tomorrow, he will be auctioned along with the other properties of the math. No one knows in whose hand they will go and what their fate will be. The very thought of it breaks my heart. But I wonder how you have all along been so indifferent to it. <clears throat> Baba Mahashaya could not remain unmoved. He burst into tears like a child, and said, I feel so helpless. I do not know what to do. Kishori Babu said, You do not have to do anything. You have only to give us your consent for what we do. You do what you like 
Це Бабач. Джанджа Питамат was clean and arrangements were made to carry the deities in the right royal manner in a palanquin with a kirtan party performing in front of the palanquin and a, and a large number of devotees who had assembled there on hearing about the homecoming of the deities following the palanquin. So many devotees follow, follow them. On reaching the mat, the Abhishek or bathing ceremony of the deities was duly performed. They were properly dressed and fed. Baba Mahashaya and his companions began to live in the mat, in that place. Once an Englishman who was a Christian priest went to see Babaji Mahashaya. He, Babaji Mahashaya, as usual, received him with a loving embrace and made him sit by, the, by his side. The priest was both sur surprised and impressed. After making some cautious in inquiries, inquiries, he said, May I know what your religion is? And Babaji answered, In a very general way, is, uh, 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 I would say that my religion is what you may know as Hindu religion. But amongst the Hindus, there are five main different classes, Shakta, Shaiva, Ganapatya, Saura, and Vaishnava. I am a Vaishnava. Priest asked, whom do you worship? And Babaji said, we worship Radha Krishna and Nitai Gaur. The priest then started narrating Krishna Lila with special reference to those parts of the Lila which he thought were disgraceful. He described Krishna stealing the butter of the gopis. He's stealing away their cloth while they were bathing, unclothed in the Yamuna river, or naked in the Yamuna river. His Rasa Lila and other amorous pastimes with, with them, or the gopis in the Yamuna, and the powers of Raja. He also described Krishna's killing of Putana and Vatsatsura and other Lilas. He was describing and Baba Mahashaya was quietly listening. He was stunned and stupefied to see how from time to time Baba Mahashaya's body trembled like a tree stormed by tempest. Hair stood erect on their ends, like thorns and streams and streams of tears incessantly flowed from his eyes. Out 
after he had described the lilas, he began to point out the fault in Krishna's character. He said, So, you see, the God whom you worship is devoci, how would they say? No? <laughs> a liar, a thief, and a killer. Still, he did not see any change in the expressions of Baba Mahashaya. He was amazed. He said, I said too much against your God and religion, but you were not angry. You had signs of ecstatic joy and blissfulness. Why so? If, if you say anything against my religion or Christ, I would feel very unhappy. Baba replied, Our Bhagavan or God is not only Purna or perfect, but Purnatama, perfection at its highest. Imperfection or any fault or vice cannot even touch him. What appears to you as his faults are his embellishment. What appears as his weaknesses or imperfections are the very signs of his perfection. Because he is essentially love. And whatever he does is an is an expression of his love. Love that is transcendental, pure, and selfless. He says in Padma Purana, Maha Bhaktanam Vinodartam Karomi Vividha Kriyaha. Whatever I do, I do in order to please my devotees. And not for self-enjoyment. He says in Srimad Bhagavatam, Aham Bhakta Paradina Paradino Yashvatantra Iva Vija. I have no freedom. I am completely subjugated by my devotees. He is so much under their subjection on account of their love that he can even lie or steal or do anything that is generally looked upon as immoral to please them. This is why he is so sweet and attractive. He would not be perfect if he were not so. Look at from another point of view. The metaphysical point of view. However, he does not lie when he actually seems to lie. Because he is the essence of truth. And what he says must be true. For instance, he seems to lie when after eating earth, as a child, he says to Mother Yashoda that he did not eat it. Actually, he did not lie. Because everything, including the earth, 
is already within him. Who can say that the earth which he seemed to eat, and in fact the whole earth planet, was not already in his mouth? Did not Maya Shoda actually see it when she asked him to open his mouth? Similarly, how can he steal anything when there is nothing that does not already and truly belong to him? How can he be accused of seduction or adultery in his amorous pastimes with the gopis when there is not a single woman that does not already and truly belong to him? Of, uh, uh, of whom he is not the Paramapati or supreme husband. Lying and stealing, etc., are only his premalila or love pastimes. Priest said, Well, that may be as you say. What will you say about Krishna's killings? You regard cow slaughter as the worst sin, yet you regard Krishna, the killer of cows, as your God. Our Christ never harmed anyone. He even sacrificed himself for the sake of others. Babaji said, Christ was truly a Mahapurusha, who was specially favored by God. We shall not hesitate even in saying that he was an incarnation of God. It is against our religion to calumniate, uh, meaning to say bad things about any other religion or person. But you are not right when you call Krishna a killer. Krishna did not kill or do harm to anyone. When the demons started coming to Raja in various forms and oppressing innocent men, women, and children. Krishna demolished their devilish existence and gave them mukti, or freedom from bondage of maya or illusion. He never killed any cow. On the other hand, he was the supreme protector of cows. But when the demons came in the form of a bull or a cow, he killed them. And by killing, delivered them from that sinful existence. Then priest said, I would like to know whether according to your God, you, according to you, God can be worshipped in some particular form or in any form that one may choose. So Babaji answered, God is infinite. He has infinite forms. All the things that exist are the various forms of God. 
there is difference only in the degree in which God is manifest in them. In his incarnations, he is manifest more fully than in any other thing. Though the incarnations also differ in the degree in which he is particularly manifest in them. But all his incarnations are his forms. There is no difference between Krishna, Allah, Buddha, or Buddha, and Buddha, or Christ. For God, all religions are his religions, and he favors all those who love him. Irrespective of their case and creed. So, doesn't matter which case, which level in society, or any, any belief, but he favors those who love him. Our Jagannath Deva is worshipped by the followers of different religions in different forms. The Buddhists worship him as Buddha. The Brahma, Brahma Samajis as Omkara, or the syllable Om, while others worship him as Narayan, Varakanta, or Nandan. Dvarakanat or Nanda Nandana, Krishna, the son of Nanda. And he favors them all accordingly. Even the Mohammedans or Muslims are not denied his favor. The Shastras say that he also accepts the food prepared by Muslims. The priest was fully satisfied and he said, I have no more doubt. I'm convinced that Vaishnava religion is the highest religion. I have traveled so much and met so many saints but no one has impressed me so much. I feel that after meeting you, I am not only richer in my knowledge of Vaishnava religion, but of religion as such. The priest then placed a 10 rupee note before Babaji Mahashaya and said, I shall be obliged if you kindly offer some food to Jagannath Deva on my behalf. Navadvidas said, so Navadvidas was with them there, give the note to me, for he does not touch money. The priest gave the note to Navadvip Das, and then Babaji Mahashaya asked the devotees to add 15 more rupees to it. A number of delicious things were offered to Jagannath, and the prashad was given to the priest. Uh, to the priest when he went there again the next day. He took off his head and bowed down to Prashad and ate it with great relish. The priest liked Babaji Mahasaya so much that he continued to go 
and meet him almost every day as long as he lived in Puri. So nice. So nice. So we can see with this in this conversation between the priest and Babaji how our thinking should be understanding the nature of Radha and Krishna as infinite and unlimited. And we can often see this in Guru Dev. We know that there are many rasas, and we are in Radha Dasyam, Manjari Bhava. But Guru Dev accepts everyone, even those who are in other rasas. Regardless of rasa, yeah. So, what alia rasa or sakya rasa, any rasa? Because there is no problem, and we can see that this attitude is the attitude that is attitude of great devotees. To accept everyone and respect everyone. Only in that way, I believe that love can really go between people and generally jivas when there is respect. And we can see here that. Not in one word did Babaji criticize other religions. We know that if he wanted, he could also say many things about Christianity in this case. But no, he did not. He Praised Jesus Christ. So, in that way, he did not create any negative energy between them. It's interesting how one time I was, uh, I heard about a thing that. When somebody is angry or criticizing or sad or whatever, that usually this is one type of call for help. And usual way how people react is with another call for help. They get angry, they start to fight, debate. But the only way to help anyone is to do it with love and not answer with a new cry for help. So in this story, priest was searching from Krishna Lila many, many things to find fault. But Babaji didn't do anything like that. But just nicely explained from ultimate level what this all means and how it divine. So in that way, priest was happy. <laughs> and we can see that he was all time coming back to Babaji. 
So we should stop at this part because now starting totally new part, uh, new story about Babaji. I hope you got something valuable from today's reading. You know, this also reminds me as Gurudev how he attracted many times people who are Christians and they came to, for example, Munger Mandir or to some program where before Gurudev was coming in Europe. And Gurudev was always nicely talking about Jesus and his relationship with God. And we could see, and maybe some of us came in this process like this, but uh, how he was uh, talking so nicely always about Jesus and attracted people to go even deeper into this loving relationship with Radha and Krishna through Jesus. Yeah, so, so beautiful. That's not, that's the truth, because it's universal. Radha and Krishna are not limited. And this we were reading also last time when Babaji was explaining. So they are unlimited. They appear in as many forms as there are jivas. They appear as your own personal ishtade, personal ishtade. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of their love. That they appear as your ishtade, who knows you the best and loved you the most. Thank you very much. Radha, Radha.